Hey everybody, it's all about vehicles here, and today I'll be talking to you about what I think about financing and leasing a vehicle. And cash, and paying cash. So, here we go. So, first of all, financing a vehicle, first you need credit. First, well, first you have to be 18. Establish credit. And then have, like, build up your credit. I don't know what you need these days to be qualified to finance a vehicle. Um, because I'm not there yet, so I don't really know. I guess I'll get there when I get there. So, you can finance a vehicle from anywhere from 24 months up to 96 months. So, from two years up to eight years. Of course, the longer you extend it, so, like, two, three, four, five, six, and eight years, the shorter, well, not the shorter, the smaller your finance payment will be, whether it's bi-weekly, weekly, or monthly, or even bi-monthly. So, you can probably figure it out, figure it out, weeklies every week, bi-weeks every two weeks, um... Monthly is monthly, and I'm either bi-monthly, I'm not sure, it's either, yeah, it's something to do with like two months, or, I don't know. I don't understand bi-monthly, but I understand the rest. So, of course, if you finance a vehicle for 24 months, you're going to have outrageously big, uh, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, or bi-monthly, whatever you choose, your finance payments are going to be really, really, really high, like, you're talking in the thousands, because especially if the car is, let's say, $50,000, in one year, you will have to pay 25000 plus interest. Remember that? There's always interest. Uh, you can have some, like, 9% interest, so it's a percentage that you have to pay on top of your finance payment. So what you have to do is what a lot of people should do, and especially... I'm not account. I'm not saying this is the best thing to do, but this is what I've been told. That if you ever want to finance a vehicle, do not go over six years unless you necessarily have to. Okay, if that price is not within your range, that's the only time you should be going over six years or seventy-two months financing. Also, keep your your interest rate low. I would say probably under three percent if you can do it. If you're just starting out your credit, you'll probably have an eight-year like. I'm going to say maybe 2.99% interest rate. It could be much higher because you're just starting out. Um, and usually when you are starting out your credit and you want to finance a brand new vehicle, what you want to do is get the cheapest, most basic model. But you know people these days, they overspend where they want to and they wonder why their car payment is like a lot. So, you know, you have to sacrifice for, you know, Especially if you're like, let's say, 19, you like have okay credit, and you want to finance a vehicle, just get the cheapest car you can get. Like, I'm not saying it has to be like a Chevy Spark. I'm just saying like, let's say, Kia Rio, you know, that kind of car. Like, basic model stripped down. Maybe even a stick. Maybe it has a manual transmission. I don't know. Whatever it has. But try to get the most basic model, therefore, it keeps your... Um, Bi-weekly payments or monthly payments, whatever your finance payments are, lower. And it will make it, in the end, more affordable. So, with that in mind, you have to make sure that it fits your budget. If you can figure out your budget. Um, yes, I know people that have bought $85,000 like Ford F-150s. I'm you're nuts. And they finance it for 48 months. I'm like, Wow. You know, you're talking 20000 plus, you know, a year just to pay off your finance payments. To own the truck outright or vehicle, whatever it is, car, van, whatever. So, remember, you have technically bought the vehicle, but you don't technically own the full amount of it. So, we have to remember, financing is you bought it. Yes, it's in your name. Yes, it's insured in your name. I know that. But you don't. 100% own it till you pay the car off, aka finance payments. Get it? Okay, good. We're moving on. Moving on to leasing. Leasing is what they like to call, or what I like to call, long-term rental. So, you don't own it. You borrow it, technically. In terms, you practically borrow it from, let's say, Honda. Let's say, you know, like, some Honda dealership, okay? So... Let's say you leased a Honda Pilot, okay? And with tax in, this is Canadian, remember I'm Canadian, so this is Canadian dollars. In, 
in Canada, this pilot cost with tax uh, $53,000. Okay, so we have a $53,000 Honda pilot and you want to lease it. So you can you can lease it for two years. You can lease it for three, four, and five years. That's a, as long as I can, I've seen it. Most people do three to four years because, you know, after four years, some things start to uh, break down, um, to say, to speak, kind of. So you have to move on from that. So what I'd like to do is when you lease a vehicle, please do not do it over five years. Please, 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 please. Because I know you're also, also with leasing, you have a mileage or kilometer limit. You can Once you go over that, you have to pay like, let's say, five cents to a kilometer or something. You, you are now, there's a fee. The fee is you have to pay a certain amount of cents um, per mile or kilometer you drove over your maximum only. So let's say you have five-year uh, 60,000 mile cap. And, or a 100,000 kilometer cap, if you surpass that, you will be charged a fee for every kilometer or mile you go over, which sucks. You don't want to do that. So be careful in mind with a uh, leased vehicle. You have a mileage or kilometer distance limit. Um, it's really a limit uh, more than a maximum because if you surpass the limit, you have to pay. So... With that said, when you're going to lease a vehicle for over, let's say, let's say three years, um, you have to take a few things into account. You're boring it. You do not own it. If something goes wrong, if you have raccoons in the back of it or whatever happens, if that, if that vehicle becomes trashed, it's on you. Because why should the dealer, and this is the dealer's point of view from what I've heard, is the dealership is not responsible to fix it. Well, they are responsible to fix it, but you're the responsible person who has borrowed the car or at least it, and now it's damaged, so now they have to deal with it. Therefore, you're being charged X amount of dollars because you damaged the vehicle that you don't own. So let's say for 36 months, you, uh, here's a good scenario 36 months, Honda Pilot, 53000 you know, dollar pilot. It destroyed, you, you know. You, I don't know, you destroyed it, your kids destroyed it or something, let's say, and now you bring it back after three years or your 36 months to lease and the dealership's like, what happened? You know, so now you're charged X amount of dollars to get it fixed so they can sell it. Yes, they will sell it as a used vehicle, as a X lease vehicle. So... And also, people who want to buy ex-lease vehicles, be careful because they're usually beat the snot out of. Because why should people have to drive them like uh, grandmother? I'm just saying. Don't don't hate me for that. Don't go say, "Oh, you are offending people." I'm just saying. Most people who drive leases, I've seen it time and time again. They're destroyed. They're absolutely destroyed. They have high high mileage after three years. Like we're talking, like a hundred thousand miles or one hundred sixty thousand kilometers. They're, like, beat, they're destroyed, they look like they went to war and back. Like, they're just destroyed. Don't buy a ex-leased vehicle. If you're going to buy a used vehicle, make sure you get, like, a Carfax report on it or something, or car proof report here in Canada, and make sure it was not an ex-rental. Because, let me tell you something, nobody cares about rental. They will beat it, trash it, they don't care, because it's not theirs, is it? Unless they get in an accident, of course. I hope people don't do that. So... Moving on to payments of a leased vehicle. Leased vehicles, you know, you're going to pay, you know, of course, money to borrow it. Um, but at the end of your lease term, you have the option to buy the vehicle for X amount of dollars, which is usually under um, market value, usually. So if you really needed a car by then, and you didn't want to release, and you had, let's say, $20,000 on you in cash, ready to buy a vehicle, and you happened to, upon wanting to keep your $53,000 Honda Pilot, yeah, you can buy it from them. And, of course, you have an automatic discount because you have leased a vehicle from them. So, over time, um, usually, you put, uh, it depends. You pay about, it's hard to say because... It fluctuates very 
like really like it fluctuates um between car and car and make a model and cost and whatever right so let's say you have a 360 dollar canadian dollar that is in canadian money currency whatever you want to call it um dollar amount least uh, vehicle monthly payment they're usually monthly that's all i really i've seen them apparently you can do them bi-weekly i don't know that's up to you to tell me i'm not a finance expert i'm just telling you what i've known about this and i'm pretty darn accurate so with an leased vehicle you have to remember that you're gonna pay let's say 360 a month right and in you know 12 months it's gonna be you know like four grand you know surpassed four grand or whatever right so in three years it's let's say 12 grand let's say and you know you have to figure out that you know that's 12 grand off of what you bought the van for or whatever your vehicle is right so when you go back and want to get a new vehicle they'll say wait a sec before you want to lease a new vehicle this is what we can sell you your old leased vehicle for right and it's usually a fairly good discount for what you've leased it for so you know be careful, you know, especially if you did not treat that vehicle with all due respect and they're already trashed on it, you might not want to buy it because, you know, there's going to be lots of problems, especially if it has high mileage at a really young age. Um, usually the the saying goes 10 years, um, 140,000 miles or 260,000 kilometers every 10 years. Yeah, my father only came to 127 in his last truck. Woo! Nine, nine years. There you go. But uh, with the new truck, it looks like we're going to do a lot more than uh, 200,000 kilometers or 120,000 miles. So, with that being said, moving on to cash. Of course, simple. You pay cash for your car. You add the tax in. You pay that full amount. Bing, bada, boom, bada, bing. You out the door. Plate's new. Gone. It's all yours. No payments, nothing. You own it outright. So, there you go. That is my take on finance leased and cash bought vehicles. Um, comment down below how long you financed or you leased your vehicle. You don't have to tell me your payment. You just have to tell me how long and how much was your vehicle full amount with taxes in. Um, doesn't matter what state you're in or province. Just give me a rough estimate number. It can be rounded like $62,000. Tell me your vehicle, make, model, trim, and, uh, yeah. You don't even have to tell me how long you financed it or leased it. You just have to tell me it's financed or leased or paid cash. I don't care. You comment what you want. I don't really care. As long as it's not offensive, that'll be fine with me. All right, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. And, uh, I'm going to be working on an intro soon. I got a new computer coming in sometime, like, no later than Wednesday. It's a uh, monster. Not cheap, though. So, yeah. So, please like, comment, subscribe. Tell all your friends to come over here, and especially you, Rob, over at Throb Nation, and Mark at Tundra Dude 34 and Gear Runner, uh, Andy there. If you need anything to do with firearms, Tundras, and all that jazz... Go subscribe to him. If you need cars or anything about uh, cars that literally, you know, you would want to own. Not saying a Civic Sport hatch is one of them, Rob. Go check out Throb Nation. He used to have a Mercedes C43 and a Corvette Stingray. I don't know what happened. I'm kidding, Rob. It's okay. And if you need to know anything about Tundras, anything, I mean anything Tundras, go check out Mark at Tundra Dude 34 and if you need anything to do with food, wood, trucks too, go check out Brian at Edge Every Day. I'm all about vehicles. I'll talk to you guys later. And tell all your friends about this channel because I'm going to start trying soon. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.